How to fix a running toilet guaranteed, canister flush style. So step number one is really easy. Shut off the water. You wanna shut off the water to the toilet to make sure you don't make a mess. You don't let water spray anywhere. So shut off the water supply by turning the angle stop a quarter of a turn to prevent water from spraying everywhere. Or if you've got a multi-turn, you may have to turn it a few times. Then flush it, make sure it doesn't fill back up. If it fills back up, your angle stop's not working properly and needs to be fixed. Now, the canister style flush valves are a little bit different. They don't have a flapper. When you see, they pull up the canister. Now, I've actually got one here, and what it does is it pulls up on this chain and lets the water go down into this area right here. So, these aren't really hard to work on. I remember the first time I went to one, it scared the mess out of me. But what you wanna do is turn off the water first, then flush the toilet, let it go down. Once the water goes down, you reach inside here, turn that and see how that unlocked? Very easy. Now you can pull this whole thing out and work on it. And I gotta tell you, I didn't know how to do that in the beginning. It took me a while to figure it out. Check the canister for cracks or leaks in the rim and replace it if necessary. If not, check the washer at the bottom. If it's leaking down around the flash valve, it's really easy to change this washer. Do you see how easy that came out? Putting it back in is almost as easy. What you wanna do is line it up and push it in that groove and then feed it all the way around. Once you get it in, it really doesn't wanna go anywhere. Now I've put that whole thing back in. Do you see how quick and easy that was? Changing the washer on a canister flush valve is something you can do at home very easy. Now, You've got to hook the handle back up, but you put it back together. As you see, you've got a groove like that down in the bottom. This is the part that's attached to a toilet. You're going to line it up, stick it back down where it goes right in that slot like that. Go ahead and let the canister drop. Turn it a quarter of a turn. And now it's locked in. It's not going anywhere. If you do that, hook your hose back up on top. Turn your valve on. Try to fill it up and see what it does, see if it keeps running. Now, if you have a crack in this, or you feel a crack in this, or there's a crack in this, you may need to replace the entire assembly. Again, you're gonna have to undo the bolts on the bottom, pull the tank, that way you can get on the bottom and do this. Now, this is under that big washer, that big gasket that's down there. Put it back together like it is, tighten it up, put it back in. If it's leaking through here and running, you're going to see water down in the bowl. You're going to see the top of the water shimmer. You're going to be able to tell water's running in that toilet when it shouldn't be. But what if this isn't it? Well, if this isn't it, now, now you've got to look at the fill valve. So step three, the fill valve can also cause a running toilet. Adjust the water level by literally adjusting this screw here. Make sure that it's not coming up too high. If it's coming up too high and water is overflowing into the canister, it may be as easy as adjusting it and getting your float to come down lower. Now you always wanna set your float to where when it comes up, it's about one inch below the overflow on the canister. And one thing you always wanna make sure of anytime you're working with a fill valve is that the top of it, where the vacuum breaker is up top, you wanna make sure that this is also above the flood rim level where water's not gonna ever be able to come up to this. If you've tried adjusting and it doesn't work, you may need to rebuild the fill valve. Now that involves pulling the diaphragm valve, checking it out, maybe replacing it. It's not hard to do. You pull this little cap on top. Now mine's yellow, yours could be red, it could be a different color. Pull this up and disconnect the screw from the lever right here. Once you get that done, grab your fill valve Turn it a little bit and pull it out. This is the diaphragm valve I'm talking about. If it's old, if you've had a lot of chemicals in your water, it may be time to just replace the diaphragm valve. If not, just take it apart, clean everything up, clean the diaphragm valve, make sure it looks good. You've got a spot here where that little pin goes right down in the middle to make sure it all lines up. Put it back together. Stick it back in until it goes down and then turn it just a little bit to the right. 
Now it's all put back together. At this point, the hose is hooked up, everything's good. You can turn the water on here and see if this works. One thing you can do on a diaphragm valve too, you can normally listen to it and see if you can hear any water running through it. So if you've turned it back on and it doesn't work, now you may need to replace it. So at this point, you've taken it apart, you've tried to fix it, but now maybe you need to replace it. What I'm gonna recommend you doing is putting a towel down here. Put a towel down here, turn the water off, flush your toilet. That's gonna get rid of most of the water in the tank. But as you see, there's still gonna be about this much water in here. At this point, you can get a wet vac in there to get the rest of the water out, but you're still gonna have some. So put a towel here, because when you undo this, you're gonna get a little water out of here. And leave your towel here. No matter how much vacuuming you did or sponges you used, once you start loosening this up and take everything apart, now if the rubber gap, if the rubber washer's down in there good, you're not gonna have a problem. But when you pull it up like that, any water in the bottom's gonna come out. You wanna make sure this towel catches it. But once you take that out, disconnect the rubber hose, and right here's your fill valve. And there's the piece that goes on top. So this looks just like a fill valve that you would replace it with. This is your float that makes it go up and down to turn it off. Whenever you put it back in, if you do have to pull it out, make sure you get your rubber washer right here on the bottom. You don't need any pipe dope. You don't need anything for it. Slide it right back in. Now remember this level. You want to keep this level either the same as what was in there or if the other one was below water, make sure you extend it up. And all you have to do to do that is see this white ring right here? You take this and push it up this way. Now that's adjustable, okay? So you can set this for whatever height you need. What I like to do is set them down in here and pull it up to where this is just about flush with the very top. That's got me above this. Even if this rises, I don't have any problem. So once you get it set at the height you want it, turn it, make sure it's locked in really good. Grab that piece and pull it right down in position. Now it's locked, it won't go up and down. It is set for the height that you need. Again, remember your washer. Slide it in, it goes right down in the hole. You wanna make sure at this point that nothing is in the way of your trip lever here. If it's in the way, you wanna twist it, turn it like you don't want it up here by the handle. You want it right around in here because remember this hose is gonna go right here. Once you get it in, take your nut, And again, don't over tighten it. Just enough so it won't leak. You're gonna take your hose up top, put it back in position, and you're gonna hook your water up. Now, as you can see with this tightened down, the top of my fill valve is still above here. It is literally just under the top edge of this tank. Crack your water on a little bit, okay? Once you crack your water on, you wanna look here. Are there any leaks? If not, go ahead and turn it all the way on. Now these quarter turn valves, you pretty much gotta have them on all the way anyway. But if it's a multi-turn, crack it on a little bit, let it fill, see if it stops. Just like we did earlier, look down in the bowl to see if there's any water movement. So at this point, you're gonna put the tank lid back on. Be careful not to drop this. I cannot tell you how many plumbers I've worked with that have had to buy new tank lids because they dropped it. They dropped it on the counter and broke a counter. They did something like that. So be careful with this. I love to lay it down on the floor, on a rug or anything that may be in there. If not, maybe lay a towel out to set it on it. But make sure you put it back just the way it goes. And one thing I like to do at this point, since I've rebuilt it, go ahead and flush it again because I wanna see does that handle come up and touch it. Now, I'll even flush it really before I put the lid on because I want it to go through two or three cycles before I put it all back together. I want to know it flushes just like it's supposed to. Rebuilding a toilet can be a relatively easy and cost-saving DIY plumbing repair job. And step number 11, and this may be the most important one, subscribe to the YouTube channel for more great plumbing information. I think you're gonna like this video.